I have risen, and I am with you still, alleluia. You have laid your hand upon me, alleluia. Too wonderful for me, this knowledge, alleluia, alleluia.
forever and ever. In our first reading this morning, we see that Peter proclaims the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee, after John had been preaching that person. God had reminded him that the Holy Spirit had with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything we did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God had raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the old people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him. And he has ordered us to reveal this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. It is to him that all prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Response. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand has raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount his deeds. Response. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. The soul which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, an arrow in our eyes. Response. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth. Because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians, to the past of this offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the Lamb. The Christ, the undefiled, had sinners to his father be consigned. Death with life continued, combat strangely ended. Life's old champion slain, yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way. The tomb of the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. The angels there are testing, shrouded with great clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen. He goes before him into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead, we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feasting in the Lord. <clears throat> Seeing the empty tomb, the disciple understood for the first time the teaching of Scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. It was early on the first day of the week, and still dark, when Mary of Magdalene came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved. 
moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Our Christian faith is founded on the event we celebrate today. No one could have expressed it more forcefully or accurately than St. Paul when he said, if Christ had not been raised, then our preaching is useless, and your believing it is useless. It is our hope that Christ has been, for this life only, we are the most unfortunate of all people. We might wish that our faith were so crystal clear. A survey suggests that among the section of Catholics who attend Mass occasionally, at least once a year, only 70% believe that at the resurrection Jesus rose from the dead. Even if we go to Mass every week, we might feel that we don't believe in Christ's resurrection a full 100%. More perhaps like 70%. There always seems to be some element of doubt. We might also wish that the Gospels themselves were more specific in their detail about what happened at the resurrection. It is evident even from today's description, for example, that there was considerable confusion among Christ's followers on that first Easter morning. John describes how Mary of Magdala went to the tomb very early when it was still dark. Later, when Peter and John himself arrived at the tomb, it was light enough for them to see, even within the tomb itself, the linen cloths rolled up. This detail might suggest some confused discussion, mixed with disbelief and fear in the interval of time between the two visits, and the other Gospels substantiate that such confusion did in fact exist in the first hours and days after Christ rose from the dead. This slowness of understanding in the disciples, and indeed in ourselves, should not be disturbing or a source of difficulty. The dawning on us, as from the apostles, that Christ is risen, comes through the eyes of faith, and not with the natural vision. Sometimes we imagine that Jesus, in his risen body, looked like Lazarus as he emerged from the tomb. And that is clearly not the case, for none of the disciples immediately recognized him until he had given them some sign. Jesus in his risen body was evidently different from his appearance before the resurrection. Lazarus had been restored to ordinary life and had to die again, but Jesus' life was transformed into a glorious existence free from the limitations of space and time, and no longer, no longer subject to death. And what we see with the eyes of faith comes to us as to the apostles, not by direct vision, but through signs. These signs take many forms, but they combine to present a picture which, however hazy at first, grows in clarity as they are pieced together. One of the most important of these signs is the experience of other people, and particularly the experience 
of the Jewish people as recorded in the Old Testament. In today's Gospel, John emphasizes this side. Till this moment, he says, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. But there are many other signs that impinge on our understanding and act to complete and clarify our vision that Christ is risen. These signs include the sacraments and particularly the Eucharist, which, when celebrated, move us to accept God's Holy Spirit, who alone can give us and deepen our faith. The resurrection of Jesus perplexes our minds because it is beyond our human experience. We understand birth and we understand death. We have seen it. But rising to eternal and new life is beyond our full comprehension. The Holy Spirit can deepen our faith, however, if we are sensitive to the signs, particularly the scripture and the sacraments, by which Jesus reveals himself to us. And with the deepening of our faith, we are charged in the same way that the apostles were changed. As the apostles realized that Jesus had risen, their own confusion turned not to intellectual difficulties, but on the fact that they had totally misunderstood their law. They were full of anguish and remorse. They were afraid and agitated, for they had let him down and run away when he needed them most. But Jesus reassured them. He forgave them and they were filled with joy. It is the same for us. So often we treat Jesus as little more than a wise and good man. We hear his teaching and approve it. But like the apostles, we think of Jesus as a man with no future and expect him to die and we run away when the going gets rough. Today, Easter Sunday, we proclaim again that Jesus is not dead. He is alive. As we proclaim this, we realize that, like the apostles, that he forgives our denials of him and our running away. We realize with a fresh vision of our faith that there is new life. We are filled with joy, for even in this life, with Jesus, we can rise again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now we will have a special blessing of the Easter walk. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred day and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant. You were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, May this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. So with that in mind now, we will renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the past and mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, dead, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for true 
through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the every work of human hands, it will become for us the bread. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted by God, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with astral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hands. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. And by rising, restore our life. Therefore, overcome with past and joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they attain. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them whole. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given out for. In a similar way, when supper was in, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And as I raise the chalice of our altar on this Easter Sunday morning, I place the intentions now of each one of you here in this chalice and ask the Lord to take this throne in heaven and answer each and every one. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the 
foundation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you win to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely far on faith in heaven. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church in earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Fenton our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion or mercy for fall. Gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Dennis Law, Michael Dempsey, David White, Sean Wynn, Timothy and Julia Bray, Brendan Hassel, Patty B, Margaret and Cornelius Sanders, Billy, Mary and John Ruff, Joe Fink, Johnny and Tommy Crump, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son the dead like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body, to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your King. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, to have bestowed the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of Christ keep us safe, far eternal.
and may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's Passover have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May our risen Lord protect you and watch over you as you leave our gathering today. May you go out into the world to proclaim the good news of the resurrection. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Mass 